Now, here's, here's another side of this that's kind of important. <coughs> when we're giving our gift, are we remembering to give it to ourselves? And again and again, this is another thing they're asking us to do. Every single time we do a public thing, and when people hear it, it's okay to hear it again. Because it's important that we hear it. They tell me this at least three, four times a week, and it never gets old. Because it's like, oh, man, you'd think I'd know by now. Very simple question. Do you do your best when your batteries are fully charged or when your batteries are empty? Every time, right? If you are in constant give mode, discharge, out, out, out. I'm sending my energy out. I'm sending my energy out. I'm sending my energy out. Where are you at at the end of the day? What do you have left for the most important people in your life? Nothing. Including you. And they ask us to stop during the day and appreciate ourselves and appreciate our life, appreciate some of the people about it. If you could do it hourly, do it hourly. When the big hand hits 12, they have disciplined me. When the big hand hits 12 and I notice it, I stop. Within 10 minutes of either side, if you miss it, by the way, don't be, oh, I can't believe I didn't do it. This is why you don't work with me. Shut up. <laughs> Not that any of you would have ever done that. It's only me, right? <laughs> and you just look at where you're at and you say, hmm, love or fear. Now, remember those cues that they gave us about your body? That you are so powerful that you can create this. And your body constantly gives you feedback and says, Not so much. This isn't really working. Can you make some different thoughts? Because we'd really like to feel good, right? And in fact, when we do healing work with people, they tell us all the time to do it with the eyes of Christ. Do you know how the eyes of Christ, what the eyes of Christ are? So the eyes of Christ are, why did Christ and Christ told us this, the Christ consciousness? The Christ consciousness healed people by not seeing them as the, the world saw them. The Christ consciousness saw them in their perfection and called their perfection out. And by the way, while we're talking about that, they said miracles happen all around. In fact, the absence of miracles is a sign that something is not going well because they happen all the time if you would just open your eyes to them. And but wait, there's more. The other side says we're not so certain about what you call miracles because to us it's the natural order of things when you're in alignment. They're miracles to you all because you're getting your energy a little higher, your frequencies a little higher, and that's understandable. But please also understand that as you do that, they come in more easily, they come in quicker, they come in more regularly. I'm all for that. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Bring it on, friends. <laughs> and why didn't you teach me this when I was six? See, this is the stuff. When they teach us, it's like, really? Seriously? You waited till now? Come on, help me out of here. So, big hand hits 12. What's going on? How's my breathing? Do I have any tension anywhere in my body? Is my body saying to me, huh, maybe we're knocking at fear's door. What's my insides telling me? Breathe it out, let it go. If you're, in, if you're in love, set your intention for the next hour. If it feels good, I have enough time, I have enough resources, everything's going well. <laughs> Send it out, make it happen for the next hour. If it's a struggle, and you think, I don't have enough time, we don't wiggle, oh my God. I have all the Resources I need to be able to do what I need to do. As I relax more, more divine inspiration. And breathe deeper and come through and to me. And I can solve things much easier. Which is another piece of the curious puzzle. What are you focusing on? When you are focusing on a situation, and here, it ends with P, ends with M, kind of long word. Ah, ah. 
problem what are you focusing on when you approach the exact same situation in your life? Where is your faith? Pick up your phone. Let that be a reminder to you that as cool as this is, it can't touch that which it mimics in us playing as our parents in our creation. Remind yourself of your connection to spirit. Remind yourself how remarkable you are. Remind yourself that this is not available to only some. It's available to all of us and all the time. And each in our own way, The expression of life is continual creation. Yes. The wonderful thing about that is what you've created in the past does not have to be impacted by what you create <coughs> in the future. Because all it takes is a new idea. All it takes is a new understanding. All it takes is a new connection. And all of a sudden, the gates of the beauty line up, and all of a sudden, some really cool stuff starts falling into place. Now, this is not pie in the sky either. And they said, there is pain in your world. This we know. Things transition, people transition. There's expression, the expression is done. They said the suffering that comes from the pain is something that's completely within your realm to deal with. Because the pain is there. Having to carry that pain for years out, now that's suffering and that's a choice. Understand the distinction? The event is way back here. Why do we carry weeks, months, years, in many cases, out this pain? How does that serve us? It doesn't. It becomes weights. You know what they showed us that looks like on the other side? They showed us like bricks in a bag. When we look at people, if I see they have a suitcase full of bricks, or if I see they have a, a bag, looks like a duffel bag, and it has some big cinder blocks in it. Depending on how big it is, that's how much I know they're carrying around from their past. And we ask them to let that go. And the reason it doesn't feel good is, if you think about it, if we are expressing, that means everything is happening in the now. But we're trying to bring energy that doesn't belong here, because it's in the past. We're trying to drag it in here. And it doesn't fit here, and it's not supposed to be here, which is why it feels bad or not right or whatever you want to call it. And heavy. And heavy. Because it's like you're trying to reach back and pull something in that doesn't belong here. That's, it's the same thing. You experience pain because something is out of alignment. Something does not belong here. That's your cue. And sometimes, you don't even have to solve the issue. You just have to say, I'm just going to allow this to be the way it is. And then see what happens. Because again, who puts you here? Right? The Creator. Tom and I were up on Lake Erie at a sunset that is burned in my memory because it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. The colors were magnificent. We were sitting on a lifeguard chair on the beach, and the colors were just amazing. And because it was a still day, the water was the same color as the sky. In fact, you could barely tell where one ended and one began. And there were these gentle waves coming in on the sand, and it was liquid color, and then it would just disappear into the sand. 
We sat there for 20 minutes and did not say a word to each other, which was... Tom and Katie did not talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> Recorded live. We got this. Just say it. <laughs> it was that amazing. We were amazed. We truly were amazed. And when it got dark, we, we got off of that chair. We were just so grateful. And we got a message. And it was, if I can create all of this, why would you worry? Wow. Good point. Why would we worry? The sooner we allow things and accept, doesn't mean you have to like it, but you just accept. You know what? It is what it is. Because pain comes from resisting what is. And the sooner you just accept that here it is, <laughs> okay. And I don't have to fix it. I can just let it be and then see what happens. And so when things change, what is a common, in our society, way of dealing with change? What do people do? Resist. And what do they do when they resist, typically? They get something. They get angry. Uh, this, they can't do this to me. Who do they think they are? You know what the other side caught me on this one this year? And again, this is awareness, not about guilt. The other side said to me, and they're very gentle but very persuasive. <laughs> and I was having a go, and they said, just as matter of fact as can be, why are you responding to this this way? Well, what do you th how do you think I'm going to respond? Do you think I'm going to like this? He said, okay, we understand that this happened. How old are you right now? <laughs> said, I beg your pardon? They said, how old are you right now? Two. <laughs> and I'm having a tantrum because I didn't get my way. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had to laugh because it's like, really? Seriously? And they said, you, you have to discipline yourself and grow up, mature a little bit, to respond in something other than having a tantrum when you don't get your way. Well, if you put it that way, <laughs> I guess I can't argue with that. <laughs> and so they asked us to stop. Oh, and this was the other thing. They said... In, and they actually taught us this last year, and this is amazing, and I remind myself of this on a regular basis. So they said, do you understand? The angels came through and said this to us. They said, we don't understand you. Can you help us understand something? I was like, I help you understand something? I'm on this. You guys help me and Katie with everything. Oh, my God. Anything I could do for you guys, tell me. They said, okay, tell me this. Or tell us this, actually. Tell us this. Why do you defend your negative states with such enthusiasm? And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. We don't defend our negative states. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they said, then explain to us about your right to be angry, your right to be upset, your right to be this, your right to be that. And we don't hear in the same breath people talking about their right to be peaceful, their right to be loved and loving, their right to be beautiful, their right to be creative. So they're asking us now, and they're, they're showing me something as I'm talking with you because they're giving us some stuff. And they're asking you to write down a bunch of positive adjectives or nouns. And then pick three that kind of stand out. And it's important that you write them, not type them. Because your, your energy will be in that which you write more than what you type. Okay? You with me so far? Then what are we going to do? Okay. So look at the... So look at... There'll be three that glow. Oh, 
see how they feel. Say it out loud. And decide that you're going to develop your antenna to note every time you experience one of these in your day. That's sweet. I love this. I'm glad we're getting this. <laughs> That's a cool exercise. And they said, keep it somewhere right now. Keep it somewhere. So they're showing me like an index card at work or something like that. They're showing me you can have it in your car. They're showing me you can have it at your house. And as you experience one of these, just put a little mark on the card. What does that do for you? A whole bunch of good, good responses. It does a bunch. It starts changing your antenna. So you're starting to look for and notice different things. Things that, instead of noticing all the things that aren't going well, instead of noticing all the things that are upsetting, instead of noticing all the things that are of lower frequency, you're starting to notice higher frequency stuff. You're fine tuning your antenna. You're starting to see some richness in your day that the amazement factor maybe has gotten a little rusty. <laughs> so we're going to clean it off and allow ourselves to receive and notice the good in our life, that which works in our life. And then notice what it does to you. gotten real good at knowing where our fear comes from. And they're asking us all to start paying a whole lot of attention to where our good comes from, to where our wholeness comes from, to where our connection comes from. Because most people are not, if they're, at least this is what they're telling me, maybe, you know, maybe the other side's wrong. Or not. <laughs> and they're saying most people are much better at noticing where the negative stuff comes from, and they can tell you where they feel it in their body. They can tell you where it comes out of in their mind. And they said, not so much the good. And so they want us to start developing these habits, these patterns, to start to become aware of where this comes from within you how it connects to something greater, how you feel when your energy expands. So each time you put a mark down for one of your three things that you really want to pay attention to noticing around you, then notice, how do I feel it? Where do I feel it? How is it expressed when I feel it this way? And then look for other ways to express it. Because now you've increased your repertoire of possible responses to life. Wow. Or will this only work for me? <laughs> <laughs> and as you, as you increase your repertoire of possible positive responses to the things by habit you used to go negative on, what do you suppose happens to the quality of your life? What do you suppose happens to the quality of your health? Yeah, because you know what? They said this to me. I was feeling, I don't remember, something hurt. I was, I was down in Atlanta. I wasn't feeling good. And they said, Thomas. I said, yes, because they knew I didn't feel good. And they said, how's that working for you? And I said, what? I don't feel good. And they said, right, and you getting upset about not feeling good. How is that making you feel better? Really? Can't you let me just like for a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, they said you will never feel bad enough to make something good. Because do we try this or what? 
Not even to fight. Can you Watch see it. how bad this is affecting me? Why won't you make this better? Are you hearing any of this? <laughs> and we feel like if we get miserable enough, maybe somebody will take pity on us in the spirit world. And they, they would much rather we grow up. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm saying that in the nicest way. With all the love in my heart, the way they say it does. And please, like I said, understand. It's never, ever, 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 ever critical. It's never, you know, what do you think or why are you doing this or judging. It's always, Thomas, why would you choose this when you can choose that? Don't you think it would feel better? Don't you think your life would be fuller? Don't you think your energy would be much more positive if you would just discipline yourself to do some of this? Fine. <laughs> I guess. I can't argue with that lie. So what do you want me to do with that? So they're showing me a rainbow. What do you know about a rainbow? What has happened to the storm when a rainbow shows up? Storm has passed. Do you know that's one of the signs they give us? I love when I see people with a rainbow over their head in a session with us. That means the storm is past. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, see a rainbow right now because you know what they just told me? And I'm being quite serious about this. They put a rainbow over every one of your heads. And it's something to see. For those of you who have eyes to see, take a look. Because they gave everybody a rainbow right now. It's up to you whether you own it or not. That's your free will. You can choose to be miserable. That's your choice. <laughs> Shelly. I'll put that on my list. There you go. There you go. Rainbow. That's a good thing to put in. It is. How do you feel when you look at a rainbow? Katie talked about that. And see, this is now I understand why they're bringing this. Right. So talk about it a little bit. Talk about talk about rainbows. What do you what do you feel? What does it do to you? Oh, I feel awesome. Carefree, excited, happy. What was that? It lifts you. What's happening in a room as we talk about this? Look at your faces. And we all know there's some little green guy, a leprechaun with a pot of gold. <laughs> yeah, baby. That pot of gold, man. I'm ready for that too. I'm ready for that now. Maybe if we do that card thing, they'll give you numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that yeah. idea. <laughs> we work as a team, you know. This is how this goes. So that, I'm, I'm going to, okay, so it drives me crazy when I say I'm going to be honest with you because I truly don't know how to be because and those of you that know me know that. But I have never seen anything like this in all the time I've been doing any work like this. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen this many rainbows ever in my life in a group, ever. That's pretty outstanding. So, how are you going to own it? What are you going to bring in? This is an opportunity for change. Free will is the wild card of the universe. You can accept this opportunity that's just been given you. Or you can say, okay, but you know what? I'm really just going to go back to the way it was. Because that's our choice. That's how much we're loved. Do you think you're going to get more amazement if you're moving fast all of the time? Yeah. I want you to slow down. There's actually movements out there now that we've recently read about on the Internet of cities that are starting these programs to slow people down. People are walking to work instead of driving, and they're having uh, neighborhood picnics on designated nights where everybody just brings a dish and sits and talks. It's amazing what happens when you slow down. It's very interesting. They were, um, I was watching a program about dragonflies, which I love, and they said that, that you know, particular one, its average lifespan was ridiculous. It was like three days or something. But they're fast. And I thought, gee, what a shame. 
and and I, you know the cone of silence comes up. Oh. <laughs> and they showed me animals. Um, anybody know the lifespan of a mouse? <laughs> if it's a lucky mouse, yeah, yeah that's right. Not in our house. In our I'm house. just saying. <laughs> Four cats. <laughs> Not happening, right? Okay, most bugs, right? Anybody know what the average lifespan of an elephant is? 70 years. Galapagos tortoise. Average is 100. The oldest one in captivity was 170 years old. How about a whale? They live a long time if they're left alone. Do they move fast or slow? So the slower moving creatures tend to live a lot longer. Think about the miracle of this body, right? <laughs> Not this body, but this body. <laughs> no, I think about the miracle of that body a lot, girl. <laughs> and I'm a Christian over that. <laughs> I just love him. <laughs> Our cells are constantly reproducing new cells all the time. Think of how long we could live if we didn't put all this stress on them and we ran all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I read an article, too, about runners, oddly enough. They may not live as long because they're taxing the beats on their heart. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get too many beats out of it. No, no. <laughs> See, for me, if there's nothing chasing me, <laughs> Tom, that was your cue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Thank you. I appreciate the assistance from the audience. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> and I figure if my creator wanted me to be fast, it had given me four legs like every other efficient runner on the planet, not just two. So slow down. What's your hurry? They've shown that if you move slower, time will actually slow down with Ever notice when you're rushing around and it's like, how did it get to be that time? <laughs> you know what? It'll get done. Right? Slow down. You won't hear what they have to tell you or feel or see or whatever your gift is for receiving it if you're moving too fast. It blocks it. <coughs> they showed me once. They showed me pacing around, and they were throwing Nerf balls at me, and they kept missing me. <laughs> I was like, wow. The Nerf balls had ideas on them. Yes. <laughs> Just so There's you know. the answer. Oh, we missed it again. <laughs> Thank God they're infinitely patient. They'll just keep pitching those balls. <laughs> so you slow down enough for one to do it on the head and go, oh, an idea. Little light bulbs. Oh. <laughs> Stereo. <laughs> So just slow down a little bit and allow stuff to come to you. Don't try to force it. Stop. Control? No such thing. No such thing. It's like trying to drink water with your hands like this instead of like this. So do you want to walk them through that? Some of you have been through that before, but they're saying it's a good memory exercise. Oh. Do this. Punch it. How's that feel? This should be a fingernails. Ow! <laughs> How much can you receive with this? How much can you give? And I'm not talking about no. No. Okay. You can't. Oh, here. No. If you were trying to drink water by grabbing it like that, you'd end up licking your hand off. Do this. How's that feel? Yeah. 
How much can you give? How much can you receive? Piece of cake. Where? Oh. <laughs> cake? <laughs> this is my kind of angel thing. Yeah. Angel food cake? Yes. <laughs> and so just like your hands were, they said that's what happens to your heart. And your energy. And your energy. When you're in fear, this is what it feels like. When you're loved, this is what it feels like. Now, there's another curious effect they were showing me as Katie was talking about time. What happens to time when you're really enjoying yourself? When you're being frenetic and it goes fast, does it feel the same way? Because you've been working. What's the difference between the connection to love and having time fly and the connection to fear and having time fly? What's the difference? How does it feel when you're just having such a good time? It's, it's what time? How does that feel? Nice and relaxed. Like, wow. Expansive, wonderful, yeah. Both got you to the same point on the clock. But how you got there made all the difference in the world. One time seems magical, and the other time seems like the enemy. So while Katie was talking also, they were showing me some stuff. And they were showing me feet, curiously. And I said, interesting. <laughs> and they said, what do you do when your feet are sore? Exactly. And how does that feel? <laughs> Begins with R, ends with F. What did you give your feet? Maybe this can be one of your words because they also said that's what we give you with the rainbow. The symbol of the rainbow is relief. And stop <laughs> having to feel like I have to struggle. So if we can do that for our feet, can we do it for the rest of our body? And maybe we can pay attention to how good it feels when we cut our feet a break and start to train ourselves to notice how we can do that and tune into the higher frequency feelings we can generate within our body that will allow our body to function at a whole lot healthier rate. Does that all make sense? This has been great. They've given us some really cool stuff tonight. And I would keep going, except they're telling me they want to do some readings for some of you guys and do a who we. But I don't know. Do you guys want readings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured. I kind of figured that was there. So we'll do some of those. But before we do those, they want to do a who we, because that'll really seat the anchor, the uh, anchor, the um, rainbow stuff that's over you all. No, I'm seeing stuff. All right. So, ready. One, two, three. Ooh.